Hi, this is Jen White from Scrapper's Workshop, and today I'm going to show you how to make a portrait out of words, like the one you see here of my son. It's really very easy. First thing we need to know is how to make some brushes. We're going to make three word brushes, and I just opened a document that's about six or seven inches wide and four, maybe four inches tall, and type the word that you want here. The first brush we need to make needs to be for our darker areas, and so we want a real dark font. In this case, I chose Impact. Um, and I don't know, it doesn't have a bold setting, but it's plenty bold by itself. Except that I don't like all the space between the letters, because the more white space, the less dark it looks. So if you click up here, you can get the character dialog. And I'm just going to move this little slider here. Oops, there we go, a little bit to the left, until everything kind of snuggles up. It's still readable, but it leaves a lot less white space in between. So I like that like that. So we're going to go to Edit. Define Brush Preset, and we're going to name this Beck, Beck Dark. And we'll say OK. Now I need to do that two more times. I'm going to make a new layer. And actually, easier way to do that. I'm just going to copy that layer, and then we're going to change the font on it to some font that is not too heavy but not too light either. Something kind of in the middle. Um, yeah, this one's cute. I like that. And I think I'm going to use lowercase on the two letter. Yeah. We'll do Becky. There, that's kind of pretty. So we'll do that. We'll make a brush out of that. And that's going to be our medium value. So we're going to go to Edit to find Brush Preset. And we'll call this Becky Medium. And then one more time, duplicate that, back to the text tool, and I'm going to find something real light and airy. Let's see what I've got. Ooh, this is pretty. Oh, let's turn off the other one so we can see it. There we go. We just need to resize it a little bit. There we go. And we're going to create a brush. Find brush preset, we'll call this Becky White. We'll say okay. So now that we've got our brushes made, we need to prepare our picture. Here's the photograph that I took, and you'll notice I've extracted her off the background so we don't have anything distracting in the picture. I've also made sure that the levels are good, that it's not too dark or too light, that it has a nice range of brights and darks. First thing we need to do is change this to black and white, and that's real easy to do. You go to image adjustments, black and white. Now look at it and see it looks a little flat, like I've maybe lost some of that contrast. So I'm going to kick up the yellows a little bit and bring her skin out. And I want to make this pattern on her clothes kind of disappear, so I'm going to move the magentas down and get that pretty much to black. There we go. I think I like that, bring the yellows up just a little bit more. There we go, that looks good, and we'll say OK. So now that we have it in black and white, we need to do what's called posterizing. We go to Image. Adjustments, Posterize, and we're going to choose four levels because I want four different colors here. I have black, dark gray, light gray, and white. And that looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to say OK. Now we're ready to prepare to brush. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this onto a file for scrapbooking. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new file. And I tend to scrap at 3600 by 3600, so we'll say OK. And we're just going to Use our Move tool and drag this over there. Okay, now you notice it's real small. That's okay. I can resize this any size I want because we're just going to be brushing over it. So it's not like I need it uh, a good resolution image. So there we go. That looks awesome. What I need to do now is we need to get each color onto its own layer. So the easy way to do that is to use the Magic Wand tool, which is right here. First thing we'll do is we'll start with the black. And notice I don't have the contiguous box checked here, so that uh, it'll pick up all the black in the whole picture when I click on something black. There we go. And all I have to do is I have to hit Control J, and that'll put just the black on its own layer. See that? So now we'll do that for all the other colors. For the dark gray, just make sure we have the right layer, the first layer selected. So click on the dark gray, Control J, there's our dark gray layer. Go back to layer one, click on the light gray. Hit Control J. There's our light gray layer. So now if I turn off the back layer, you can still see all those layers separately. 
See how that works? So now what we're going to do is we're going to use these layers to constrain our brushes. But first, I see a little problem here. See how this goes up like that? I don't like that. So I better fix it now. I'm taking a race tool. Just knock that little corner off, and that'll be fine. You want to make sure that this looks like you want the picture to end up looking because that's what you're going to do with your brushes. All right, let's start with the dark. I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer to brush onto. I'm going to choose my brush. The new brushes we made are going to be right down on the bottom. Now, if you want to keep these brushes, you need to go to your preset manager and save them because next time you clear this brush panel, um, these will all be gone. But as long as you don't change anything, they'll be there. So we're going to pick our darkest brush out here and it's really big so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller I like to work with a brush about maybe an inch inch and a quarter that looks pretty good so to tell it where to brush all I have to do is hold the control key and click on the black layer and you'll see those marching ants go around just what is black so anywhere I brush will only show up where the black color is so I'm gonna turn off the black color so we can see where we're stamping but if you look, I can just go ahead and stamp this brush like this. Now, could I make a pattern out of this? Absolutely, if I wanted to. Nothing wrong with doing that. I just find this just as easy and probably faster. If you need to get your brush off the page and it, it's too close to the edge and it won't let you do it, see how it won't let me do that? Just zoom out and then it'll let you snuggle that one right in. We're going to go on. We're going to fill this in area as densely as we can so that it looks like it's nice and dark. Notice I'm overlapping my pieces here a little bit, and that's okay. You want to make sure that you cover everything that's supposed to be black with some kind of text. Now when you get to the areas where they're very small, you don't have to worry so much about your placement. Like up here, we just want to make sure we make all that black so that it looks nice in the pic final picture. So I don't worry quite so much about whether you can read it or not, because you can read it all down here. So there's our black layer. Next layer we'll do, let's hit Control D to get rid of the marching ants. Next layer we'll do is the dark brown layer. That's this layer. We'll hold Control and click on the thumbnail to make our selection. I'm going to create a new layer to brush on, and we're going to go take our medium brush here. And let's look and see. That's way too big. I like this brush to be about half the size of the previous brush, so we'll get it down to about a half an inch. And now I can just brush over those gray areas. I don't need to turn off the background gray because I can see what I'm doing since I'm stamping in black. In this case, I'm going to overlap them maybe a little bit more because I want to make sure I have good coverage, especially in small places like this. If you don't get good coverage on that, they won't show up in the final picture. So I just kind of stamp a whole lot over that area because it, it doesn't have to be legible. And here I'm just going to go in and stamp, stamp, stamp. The areas that are larger, where you could probably read the words, I'm a little more careful with my placement on the brush, but for the most part, it's not a problem. Just make sure you get all these little skinny areas to get something in them so that they show up on the picture. Like this area down here. I'm just going to stamp over like crazy. All the way around here. Alright, so I think I got everything on that one. I'm going to control these to get rid of my marching ants. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that layer, gray layer, so now I can see how that looks. So my next layer is the light gray layer. We're going to control click to select it. Make a new layer to brush on. Get our smallest brush. Here's our lightest color brush. And I'm going to resize that. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to resize this brush to be even smaller than the last one. Pretty tiny, maybe a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to stamp away. Now I have some nice broad areas to fill in, so I'm going to be a little careful and how I do that so they're legible. Don't click and drag or you'll get that funny looking. And you'll notice when I get up to the face here, I'm only going to be sort of careful where I put it. But I do need to make sure I get something everywhere I have marching ants. 
even out here on the ends. I don't have to worry about being legible, but I want to make sure I film in that spot, especially these little areas here, because this is going to define the edge of my face. And if I don't fill those in, I've just lost that edge. All around the eye here, that's all shading. It's important. So just make sure you get it. Okay, so I filled in all that. I'm going to Control D to get rid of the marching ants. So let's turn off the underlying color. And there's my portrait. Now what can you do with that? Oh, lots of things. I would save it just like this so I have it. Let me go ahead and minimize this. And you could put a paper behind it. Let's go ahead and open a paper. And we'll drag this over. And if I move this behind everything, then we could merge the visible layers. And the easy way to do that is to click, hold your control key and click on the layers that you want, those three visible layers, and hit control E to merge them. And now I can change the blending layer on this layer until I get something I like. I usually start with overlay maybe, that's not too bad, or soft light might be even better, but you get the idea. And so you can blend that in, Ooh, that looks good, I like the overlay best. You blend that in and turn that into a layout just like the one I showed you. So thank you for watching and we have more videos over at scrappersworkshop.com. Thanks.